Hi everyone and welcome. I hope you can hear me and it would be great if someone can confirm in chat. Thanks, Lida and Diana. Um, apologies for the slight delay. Our colleagues in Belgrade had to wrap up the Geneva briefing before. But we are now ready to go and I think we should be going into our um, Southeastern European hub. And uh, we have six people. Well, <laughs> it's probably better than our previous hub um, and hoping we'll do better next time. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if anyone is new in this Southeastern European hub meetings, but um, just for the sake of it, what we do every month is um, get together in this online format to look at some of the main internet governance and digital policy developments across what we call Southeastern Europe and the neighboring area. And it is a joint initiative between CDIG, the Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and um, Diplo Foundation together with the Geneva Internet Platform. And it just follows the um, global Geneva briefing. Um, so far over the past few months, we have tried to provide a more comprehensive overview of the main developments, which were then um, also available in our monthly summaries. But this time we are trying to change the approach a bit. So instead of um, going through a list of main developments, we have chosen a couple of them and we will try to cover them in more details. I was supposed to have a couple of colleagues joining and presenting some of these developments today, but I'm not sure um, whether that will work. And the first one was supposed to be Sonia and tell us about the um, IGF in Turkey, but I don't see Sonia around, so maybe we can skip this and um, try later if she joins. If not, I'll give a quick overview. Um, so this was one of the events we were supposed to, to talk about, but let's go next. Um, and as I'm pretty sure most of you know, the Freedom House released its usual Freedom on the Net report this month, and um, some of the countries in our region are featured in this report, and we thought it would be good to go through them. Now, um, Andriana, who is online, um, has, prepared an, um, has prepared an overview of this report, but I'm not sure whether she can speak. So let's um, see if she can do it. If not, I'll go through the report. Andriana, can you try? Okay, I'm guessing it doesn't work, so um, I will try to go to this report and use the notes that um, Anjana has kindly shared with me, so thanks a lot for that and um, apologies to everyone for the, the trouble. Um, so, this month the Freedom House published its annual Freedom on the Net report, which as um, I'm sure you know measures the level of internet and digital media freedom in countries around the world. This year it has been um, 65 countries, six of which are in the um, city region, again what we call Southeastern Europe and the neighboring area. And these six countries are Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Georgia, Ukraine and Turkey. Um, in this report each country receives a numerical score from zero, which is the most free to 100, which is the least free, again in terms of internet and digital media freedoms. And this course serves as a basis for an internet freedom status designating the countries as free, partially free, or not free. So um, this is just a methodology. Um, a quick overview of um, the ratings and how they are determined. Um, there are three broad categories, obstacle to access, limits on content, and violations of users' rights. When it comes to obstacles to content, um, the report looks or assesses infrastructural and economic barriers to access, government efforts to block specific applications or technologies, and legal regulatory and ownership control over internet and mobile phone access providers. Then limits on contents uh, basically looks at filtering and blocking of websites, other forms of censorship and self-censorship, manipulation of content, um, online news media and the diversity there, and the usage of media literacy for social and political activism. And the last category, violation of users' rights, measures legal protection and restrictions on online activity, surveillance, privacy, repercussions for online activities, um, such as legal prosecution, imprisonment, physical attacks, and other forms of harassment. Now, um, it is also important to say how the report um, is actually produced. Um, and I just quote from the report to avoid any 
interpretations. It says that more than 70 researchers, nearly all based in countries, um, they analyze countries to the project by examining, examining laws and practices relevant to the internet, testing the accessibility of select websites and services, and interviewing a wide range of sources. So it's basically a sort of a crowdsourcing uh, report produced by the Freedom House with um, reporters on site. Okay, so now going to the, the actual report and how the um, countries in the region, the six countries in the region, feature in this report. And I'll be going again through um, Andriana's slides. On this slide, there is an overview of the um, six Southeastern European countries that have been rated by Freedom House in this report. And um, the only country whose score qualify as free, according to this report, is Georgia with the overall score of um, 24 and partially free scored are scores are allocated to uh, Armenia, 32, Ukraine, 45, and Azerbaijan, 58. While uh, Belarus and Turkey, unfortunately, have scores that qualify them as not free, um, at least based on the reports in the Freedom House report. Uh, by the way, you are free to comment in chat and I'll make sure to read the comments once I'm done and um, then you can also take the floor and um, speak for yourself, especially if you are in one of these countries covered in the, in the report. It would be interesting to have a discussion around it. Um, going to the next slide, uh, this shows that internet freedom declined in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Turkey, and Ukraine. And again, um, Georgia is the only one that earned an improvement in its internet freedom score. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but um, the slide is supposed to show what manipulation tactics are reportedly, reportedly being used in the six countries to undermine democracy. And um, again, based on the findings of this report, I just go through, through some of them. Um, in Azerbaijan, Belarus, and Turkey, apparently paid pro-government um, commentators are one of the tactics um, used for manipulation. Pro-government media and propaganda are reportedly being used in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, and Turkey. Political boards in Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Ukraine. Fake news around elections seems to be common in Armenia and Turkey. Hijacked accounts in Belarus, Turkey, and Ukraine. And according to the report, um, Georgia seems to not be using any of these uh, manipulation tactics. And going next, um, it is interesting that the, the Freedom House calls a part of our region Eurasia, but, um, well, I guess we can <laughs> leave the, the names aside. Um, this is looking at internet topics censored by type, and I'll go again quickly through, through some of them. Uh, criticism of authorities is reportedly being censored in Azerbaijan, Belarus, Turkey, and Ukraine. Corruption, um, as a topic for discussion, seems to be censored in Azerbaijan and um, Turkey. Conflict uh, being censored in Belarus, Turkey, and Ukraine. Political opposition, not a very popular topic in Azerbaijan, Belarus, and Turkey. Um, and social commentary in Belarus. Um, there are a couple of more, but I guess we can skip them. And go through the next slide, which again, oh, I, I hope you can see them a bit better than I do on my screen. But uh, anyway, the report is publicly available, so you can go and um, look into a bit more detail. This is supposed to show the key internet controls that reflect uh, restrictions on political, social, and religious content for um, the period covered by this report, which is between May 2016 and um, June 2017. And I'll go through some of the findings quickly. Um, apparently, social media or communication apps were blocked in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey, and Ukraine. So that makes um, all countries in Azerbaijan, Belarus, Turkey, and Ukraine political, social, and religious content was blocked over the analyzed period. Network shutdowns occurred, and pro-government commentators um, have apparently manipulated online discussions. Physical violence um, was also analyzed in this report, and physical violence towards a blogger or an ICT user seems to have occurred in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, and Ukraine, or at least it was reported to be so. 
uh, while in Azerbaijan, Turkey and Ukraine, a new law or regulation was passed that increased censorship or punishment, uh, while in Belarus, a new law or regulation increasing surveillance or restricting uh, anonymity was passed over the um, past year. And technical attacks against government critics or human rights organizations seem to have occurred in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Turkey and um, Ukraine. Going next, um, this is looking at um, internet freedom versus uh, press freedom and it shows that the press is rated as being partially free in Georgia and not free in Armenia. While the next slide um, should be showing us that uh, press is rated partially free in Ukraine and not free in Azerbaijan, Belarus and Turkey. So again, some um, concerning findings there as well. And going next, we have internet freedom versus internet penetration versus GDP. And this complicated uh, figure should be showing the relationship between internet freedom, internet access, and the country's gross domestic product per capita. Um, the x-axis looks at the country score in the 2017 uh, Freedom on the Net report adjusted to exclude aspects related to internet access and the levels of internet uh, penetration are on the um, y-axis using 2016 stats from the um, International Telecommunication Union. And the size of each plot is indicate of its, um, indicative of its GDP per capita according to the latest figure from the World Bank. So it's basically a um, collection of data from various sources putting together this um, graph. While the wealth generally translates to greater access uh, as one of the main findings, neither are a decisive indicator of free expression, privacy, or access to information online as evidenced by the range of internet freedom environments represented at the top of the, the chart. This one is indeed a complicated um, chart to look at, but it's pretty interesting if you um, go through the bubbles carefully one by one. So uh, for whoever is interested, I do encourage you to go through the report and look at them, look at them um, carefully. So this was the Freedom of the Net report. It really is not extremely um, encouraging when it comes to our region, um, maybe with the exception of Georgia, which scores um, particularly impressive um, this time. And it really is a pity that we don't have anyone from Georgia here today to tell us a bit about their uh, positive experience. I'm not sure if anyone would like to comment or maybe um, ask a question or um, raise a point. I see a comment from Liana being said to see that Armenia is um, listed as being uh, partially free. Anyone else? Any comment, concern. Um, we will be writing about this report also in our uh, monthly newsletter, which I hope will be ready to be distributed sometimes next week. But again, it will be a um, rather um, general overview, so I do encourage you to look through, through this report. Okay, I guess there is no question or concern. Um, well, <laughs> not something you would like to share. So we can go to the next part of our briefing, which is the um, Eastern Partnership Summit, which was held a couple of days ago in Brussels on 24th November. And this is the usual meeting between the European Union and its member states and the Eastern Partnership countries, which are Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Georgia, Moldova, and Ukraine. What was interesting about this summit was that it um, had quite a lot of focus on digital policy issues and we thought it would be um, nice to try to cover it here um, as well. Um, so the digital economy and digital policy issues were among the areas for reinforced cooperation between uh, EU, its institutions and its member states and the um, Eastern Partnership countries listed on the slide. Some of the specific areas mentioned in the statement released at the end of the summit uh, work cooperation and EU support in enhancing cybersecurity and fighting cybercrime across the um, Eastern European countries. Also, um, it was underlined that, that more efforts should and could be done by all parties to further harmonize digital markets. So, um, digital 
markets now become not only an issue for the, the European Union, and it's 28, well, soon 27 member states, um, but also the Eastern Partnership countries. And the idea is to have a better integration between the digital markets in EU, the so-called digital single market, and the digital markets in Eastern um, European countries. And a few other points underlined in the so-called deliverables for 2020, and these are basically action points that the parties have agreed to work on um, up to 2020. The harmonization of roaming pricing and the reducing of roaming tariffs among the partner countries. And you might have noticed in our previous um, summary that the EU Commissioner for Digital Society is putting quite a lot of um, emphasis on Western Balkans and the um, reducing of roaming charges is one of her priorities. And apparently this is also going to be one of the priorities of um, Bulgaria for the first half of next year when they will hold the presidency of the Council of the European Union. Another point is um, easing and um, cheaping access to internet through the rollout of national broadband strategies. So the European Union is committing to support countries in Eastern Europe in developing their um, national broadband plans and strategies and also in implementing them, and um, support for job creations in digital industries and in the digital economy is another area covered uh, among these deliverables for 2020. And these were the main um, highlights of the Eastern Partnership Summit last week. I guess it would be interesting to try to look at how these deliverables are actually implemented and uh, how the actual cooperation is going to happen in reality, but um, we'll be trying to, to cover these things in our summaries as we move ahead, hopefully. Um, so let me stop here and see if we have any comments or, or questions on this. And I see um, Nelly from the Bulgarian government on the call. Um, really, I'm not sure if you want to say something about your government's priorities for next year or um, anything that has been said. And then that goes the same for anyone else on the call. But if not, I guess I'll go ahead. Um, the next issue we wanted to highlight at this um, hub meeting was related to another report that was recently published by the International Telecommunication Union, and that is the usual ICT development index for this year. The index measures the level of ICT development in countries around the world. Um, countries are assigned an um, index which combines 11 indicators concerning ICT access, so access to internet and other digital technologies, the use of um, such technologies and digital skills that people have to, to use them. And the index in this report um, vary between 8.98, which is um, allocated to Iceland with rank 1 in the, in the top, and 0 0.96 uh, for Eritrea. And why I wanted to outline here the um, two extremes is because um, in the next slide you will see how countries in our region um, have been scored. So it would be good to know how to place them between these two extremes, rank 1 and um, rank 176 in the top. Um, Nelly saying that they are just listening this time. Um, thanks Nelly and um, hello to, to you there in Sofia. Okay, so we've tried to copy here um, the, the scores for countries in our region, again, um, Southeastern Europe and the neighboring area. And they don't look extremely bad, but they don't look extremely encouraging as well. Um, ITU, when they, they look at countries, they look at them um, in regions, and what you see now on the slide is what they call Europe. But we have tried to only list here the countries um, in our uh, region or those that usually are part of city activities. So you see here that um, the first in the top is Cyprus with a um, high score 7.77. Um, and then we go down to Bulgaria, Serbia, Romania, Montenegro with 6 point something. Um, Turkey, Macedonia, Bosnia, and Albania going um, between 6 and um, 5. And what is interesting to look at is also the rank change, the um, arrows on the um, right side of the screen, which shows whether the um, index has been increasing or decreasing 
over the past year and while some countries have been making progress others have not and on the contrary the, they have decreased in, in index and on um, this slide Macedonia and Bosnia are only two examples um, and then the other region that the, the ITU is considering in this um, study is um, including these countries from uh, what we call in our um, denomination um, neighboring area so we have Belarus between Belarus and Ukraine with the scores varying between 7 0.55 to 5.62 and again which is um, what is discouraging is that many of these countries actually have um, lower scores than they had last year so that means something um, is happening there and not much progress is being made in terms of ICT development and again I don't encourage you to go through the report because it does have a lot of interesting data and what we're showing here is only the overall scores and that's, that's it about the ITU report. Not sure if there are questions or comments. I guess not. Well, that takes us to our um, last topic for this month, and this is related to cryptocurrencies. And we chose to also include this in um, this month's a briefing simply because there have been quite a lot of developments in the region not only this month but also the the past few months um, in terms of virtual currencies and how they are being seen both by uh, financial regulators by governments at large and um, how they are being used so um, three quick updates from the past month in Croatia there is a city whose authorities um, are actually looking at creating a system that allows people to pay communal fees and taxes uh, via cryptocurrencies. So it will be interesting to see how that will work. Um, in Turkey, the central bank president says that cryptocurrencies could contribute to financial stabilities, stability, which is quite an um, interesting statement from the president of a central bank. And um, apparently in the country there is a draft legislation being discussed now on legalizing exchanges with cryptocurrencies. And the last development is from Belarus, where the country is um, going to host soon the first centralized crypto exchange covering the territory of the customs union, uh, which is um, a group of countries um, in that, that part of Europe covering um, some of the former Soviet countries. And that's it. Let me see. We still don't have Sonia, so there's nothing to go back. Yes, thank you, Liana. Um, Armenia is among the customs um, union countries. Okay, so these were the four main topics we wanted to go through at this month's um, overview of main digital policy developments in the region. And before we close and we look at the um, upcoming events or a couple of events, I would just like to ask the few of you who are here today whether you find this approach better than the one we had before. So um, again, before we had an overview of basically a lot of developments, but only covering them briefly in a sentence or two. And this time we tried to only pick a couple of them, but go a bit uh, more in depth. So uh, my question to you is, which of the two you think would work best and you would like to see as we move ahead with the um, Southeastern European hub? And uh, you are free to take the mic or just type in chat, but I would very much like to hear from you because um, you are the, the subject and the target of this have meetings and it would be good to know what you find most useful. Um, so Liana says she cannot speak. I'm not sure if that's a permission that we need to give. So kind request to my colleagues in Belgrade. Is there something we should be doing? Okay, I see people are typing, so let's wait for that. Okay, Diana, please try then. Hello, everyone. Go ahead. Hi. Okay. Um, so, 
Thank you, for everyone, for being with us in this hub. Uh, I think it's a good uh, change uh, that we have uh, heard here about the topics and the reports. They will, uh, just in general, it's uh, rather discouraging to see uh, our region uh, not being developed, but rather um, uh, the opposite. Uh, but as for the hub, um, I think uh, if we take um, the several topics and uh, go deeper into its discussion, it will be more interesting, and especially if uh, some of the participants uh, could take a lead and talk about that, but uh, we need mm -hmm. the participants actually to be interested in this and some volunteers to do that. Uh, but I like the idea itself, uh, so let's see what others uh, think about that as well. Thanks. Thank you, Diana. Anyone else? Um, I see Nelly saying that she's interested in blockchain management models. Um, Nelly, I, I'm not sure if Arvin is around from the um, Belgrade office, but he's one of um, Diplo's expert on blockchain and cryptocurrency, so I'm pretty sure um, he would welcome any discussion on this. Um, I don't see any other comment or request for the floor, so let me go then to the last slide of this presentation, which is listing a couple of um, upcoming events. Today there is the National IGF of Macedonia happening in Sofia. We were glad to join them this morning at the opening, and we'll see probably in a couple of weeks the um, messages from their IGF. Um, the Bosnian IGF is coming up soon. Um, I'm not sure, Lita, if you would like to tell us a couple of words of what's going to happen there. Uh, but if not, we're going to, to read the summary after the event, and Sidig is also um, gladly joining. And then we have the big global IGF at the end of December. Um, the global IG community will be meeting in Geneva to discuss internet governance and digital policy, and CDIG will be there. We will try to have an informal gathering with people from our community, so if anyone here is going to be in Geneva, please drop us a line, and uh, we'll be glad to tell you more about when and where we will be meeting. And that, I guess, and at least my slides, there's um, nothing else other than a kind reminder to please send us updates and development events from your countries, and we will be glad to include them in our monthly summaries. As I said at the beginning, the summary of digital policy and internet governance developments for November will be ready sometimes next week, and we will be sharing it. It will go um, into a bit more developments and events from the region, so you will read more there. Um, Lida is saying that she will be sending an invitation and more details about the um, IGF initiative in Bosnia and Herzegovina via the CIDIC mailing list. Thank you, Lida. We will be looking forward to that. Uh, and just a kind reminder, because I see Sandra is also with us here. Um, Sandra is with the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and both um, Eurodig and CDIG have ongoing the call for issues for um, topics to be discussed at our next year's meeting. So both Eurodig and CDIG, the call is open until the end of December, so we kindly encourage you to think about topics you would like to discuss at CDIG and at Eurodig and go and submit your proposal. It is a call for topics, not for sessions, so you don't have to actually write the session proposal or complicated things, just suggest the topics, and then we will put things together and uh, plan the events next year. Sandra, if you'd like to add anything, you are more than welcome. And the same goes for um, anyone in the room. Since we are at the end of the briefing, if there's anything you would like to add, ask, comment on, please feel free to, to do so. I guess now is the time before we wrap up. Okay, I see nothing, which means um, we can conclude. 
just a note um, as December is coming and the end of December will be busy with the IGF and everything um, related there won't be a um, hub in December and most likely no summary either but we will resume in January with a summary covering developments in both December and January and at the end of the month we will be having the usual have meeting to cover um, the updates from, from both months and we also hope that starting next month we will bring some um, new and um, improved um, things into the, the Southeastern European Hub and also look into bringing back the in situ meetings in countries around the region so if you're thinking about hosting a Southeastern European Hub meeting please let us know and we can discuss the details otherwise we will be reaching out to, to people we know would be interested in contributing to this. And I guess we can wrap up here. Thank you everyone um, and thanks to the team of editors for the Southeastern European Summary and I have a couple of them here and that's Maya and Diana. Thank you girls for um, helping with this. Their work is basically the basis for this um, hub briefing. Thanks everyone, have a good end of the month, good December and hope to see many of you at IGF. Again, just drop us a line if you know you will be traveling to Geneva and we'll be glad to meet you there. You have our email address on the screen. And thanks, Antiana, to you as well. Um, forgot to mention you. Bye everyone.